Assalamu alaikum everyone. Today we are going to be continuing on our discussion on classical mechanics. In my previous video, I've discussed classical mechanics in two main branches. One of them is kinematics and the other is dynamics. Kinematics is mostly on mo studying of motion without an application of forces. So I would predict that if I threw a ball at a specific speed, it would, you know, land on the, this position of the ground at this amount of time and it will stay in the air for this amount of time. However, these miss an incredible amount of involvement of forces in such calculations. So when I throw a ball, the ball is actually pushing against the wind it's you know combating wind resistance to get into to fall into the ground now this would be very different if i had a feather which would fall into the ground before it would be able to move in such a trajectory which of course kinematics fails to include. Dynamics, however, is the study of forces and it covers the effect of forces in daily lives and motion. So what are forces? Forces are things that alter an object's motion if it is not opposed by another force. And by alter the motion of an object, it, do, it just doesn't mean that it pushes something and something moves. It can also be something stops. That is also a force. There are two, roughly, there are two main types of forces. One is contact force, the other is non-contact force. Contact forces and non-contact forces require a bit of a demonstration. So, a contact force is something that requires touch for the force to be applied. So, for example, my hand will apply a force to this book. See, it moved over there. That means that my hand pushed it over there. And I can bring it to me again using pull. This is on an interesting demonstration of contact force. I can also move it to my side. I can, you know, do this, this. All of these are example of contact forces. Now, what are non-contact forces? Non-contact forces are sometimes called field forces because it, we imagine it to operate in a field, so like a gravitational field or an electromagnetic field. Let's use an example of gravity here. Say I left this book up and, sorry for the noise, the book falls down. Now this happens because of the gravitational field that pulls this book to the center of mass of the earth. Now the center of mass of the earth of course did not touch this book for it to be pulled inwards over there, the, the book would have melted before it even uh, went there. So that is an example of a non-contact force. And we can actually see that in things like magnets. Like if you put two magnets close to each other, they'll actually give their best energy at repelling each other if they are the same charge. And they'd actually attach automatically if it's an opposite charge. And contact forces are kind of the manifestation of non-contact forces. So for example, my hand, if you don't know by now, atoms have electrons around it. And this book also has electrons around it. So what I'm doing when I'm touching the book is that the electrons are repelling. So when the electrons are pushed here, the book the book's electrons are actually pushing itself away because it, it's repelling. Anyway, so that's the introduction of contact forces and non-contact forces. 
Now let's talk a little bit about Newton's laws of motion. In around the 17th century, Sir Isaac Newton studied forces and how those forces relate with motion. And that's where Newton's laws come in. These laws are the three fundamental laws in classical mechanics. And you may have heard it a lot, especially the second law, because that's the most important. The first law of uh, Newton's laws of motion is an object shall remain in motion and or remain at rest unless a force is acted upon it. So an object will remain at rest or remain at motion unless a force is applied to it. So right now there's no force, well, there's no net force at a direction being applied to this object. Therefore it is at rest. But is the second part of the law true? Because if I push this, the book just stops. It just stops. It doesn't continue moving on and on and on into space, out of this building, out of this country, out of this uh, continent. It doesn't do that. It just stops. But why is that? Does that mean Newton's laws don't work? No. It's because of the presence of friction in the material that it's moving across. For example, ice has a lot of friction. That's why you can play a ho ice hockey and the hockey would actually go pretty far and you can actually skate because there's very little fric friction and you can't skate on a regular asphalt road. Well, not with ice skates, that is. However, there are um, there's a bit of a category of how much friction is in a surface. So for example, sandpaper would have a lot of friction, ice would have little friction, and something like space would have zero friction. Since space has zero friction, an object can actually cruise along space and go on and on and on forever. That is what happens to rockets. If you turn off the engine, the rocket will just cruise at that speed. The motion will never stop. This is called inertia, an object's resistance to change in motion. That is why it's called an inertial reference frame. Inertial means non-accelerating. So it's resistant to that motion. So you pretend that your point of view is still, and that's how you view everything. So in an accelerating reference frame, uh, you won't feel the force. Let me uh, tell you an example. Say you're moving on a car in a highway. You feel that something is pushing you a little if you're accelerating. And so if someone, say from a mic, says, are you feeling that, that you're being pushed? You would say yes, unless you're lying. But a bystander on the earth won't say that even though even though your inertial frame in reference frame shows the earth moving towards you now that will then that's a tangent for later since this is gonna get a bit now that tangent can continue on for later since this is not a 40 minute video now let's talk about arguably one of the most important laws of Newton, in my opinion. That is the second law of motion. Force is equal to mass times acceleration. This equation, though it is tiny, has huge, huge implications. What it basically, this is the foundation of the unit of force, which is called Newtons. Take the SI unit of mass, kilograms, Take the SI unit of acceleration meters per second squared. One kilogram meters per second squared is basically one Newton. It's the amount of force needed for
for an object that weighs one kilogram to move at an acceleration of one meters per second squared. If you rearrange the equation, you would see that acceleration is equals to force over mass. That means that there is a more amount of force needed than for a heavier object to move at an acceleration than a light object to move at that same acceleration. Let me demonstrate again. Here I have three books. They weigh about the same. Well, except for this, this is pretty tiny. It would take very little force to move this book, as you can see here. I just, you know, snap this and it moves across the table. However, if I would take this book, it won't move as far. It, it requires a greater amount of force, a great deal of force actually, to make it move as far. And this book, well, first of all, snapping it makes you hurt. And second of all, it takes an even greater amount of force to move it. That means this has more mass, this has medium mass, and this has the least amount of mass. Just demonstrated to you the for second law of motion right with these three books. F is equal to MA talks about the net force. And the net force is something that is the sum of all forces that acts upon an object. So in my example of the books, there was gravity, there was something called the normal force, and there was me pushing it and the friction from the table pulling it. However, since the normal force and the gravitational force was the same, that got canceled out. And my force of pushing it was greater than friction for a while, it moved a certain amount of distance. That is the net force. And when there is multiple objects working on the force, which all the time it is, we use a free body diagram. We basically draw the body and draw all the forces around it. Now let's move on to third and final law of motion. That is usually used in metaphors, but in physics, it talks about an opposite force. For example, let's demonstrate again, since that's what we've been doing for all this video. Let's remove some books. I don't need you. I don't need you. Let's go with Sherlock Holmes again. So, suppose I punch this book. There is a force that that's going down for this you know cover to flatten out so that is the force i am applying with my punching and the book is imparting an opposite but equal reaction on my hand that's why my hand isn't punching right through the book it is stopping at an exact point let me explain in another example. Suppose this is a piece of wood and I have a hammer. This is not very stable. When I'm punching, now suppose I have a piece of wood on a hammer. After if I was punching it, if I was uh, hammering the nail, the hammer would stop at pre pretty much the exact point where the force was applied. This is because of the opposite reaction force. And this is true for all cases on contact force. Now you may be wondering that if there is an, uh, if since forces are vectors, and there is an equal and opposite reaction force for every force. And how do objects move? Like if a vector is going in this direction, then it must go the opposite and cancel each other out, right? But the reaction force 
like if you are if force is being applied to you why am i slapping myself then the thing that makes you move is the force that's being applied to you not the force that you are applying to it that's the main difference whatever force you impart does not affect how you move so that was a pretty lengthy video of mine about the about forces newton's laws but we've only just covered a teeny tiny fraction of forces because forces come along so much in physics especially in classical mechanics that i can't just explain it in one video in our future videos we're going to be talking about a lot more physics talking about mass and weight what's the difference we're going to be talking about angular motion we're going to be talking about electromagnetism gravity the field forces and a lot more so there's very dense physics content that is about to come into my channel and i don't want you to miss out on that especially if you like this video so please subscribe and stay notified to all the future videos i will upload and thank you for watching and i will see you next time bye